Hi, it's Stephen Caleb from Brownells, broadcasting from the frozen tundra of central Iowa today. Very cold day. And we're here to bring you another episode of Smithbusters. And you've got an AR-15 out. I can't believe it. Yeah, first off, I just want to comment on the cold thing. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's colder than it needs to be, Steve. Uh, being from Louisiana, it's ridiculous. And Ooh. I didn't know, like, I know I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but I just got to say it. Like, there was a level of cold where I was just like, cold is cold. Yeah. You know, it's like once it gets like to 30, it's like cold is cold. It doesn't matter. It's a whole, there's, there's multiple other levels I have discovered since I've lived here. Anyways, yes, we have an AR-15. Oh, okay. What do you want to talk about? Well, every time we do a video on an AR-15, uh, someone in the comment section says, you know, I could build the same thing for, you know, $400 less, $500, $1,000 less, and it'll be just as good. And uh, Sure it will. I don't think that's very true, Steve. First of all, it's like maybe it'll be just as accurate at, you know, 50, 100 yards. Um, but it's not going to retain that for as long. And you know, So are you saying the myth is cheap rifles are just as good as expensive rifles? That's exactly what I'm saying the myth is here. Especially, uh -huh. specifically AR-15s. Uh, but this kind of applies to a little bit of everything. So. Well, they used to say, you know, cheap cars are as good as expensive cars. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. And uh, you guys all know how that goes. And just like, it's, let, me, let me use this as an example. So firearms, especially AR-15s, uh, I think it's safe to say essentially they're tools, right? Okay, yep. So yep. If, you ha if you need a tool that's going to last for... Uh, you, many jobs, sure. especially if you're like, let's just say, for example, you're in the gunsmith shop, Steve. You need a tool you know you're going to use every day. Are you going to go to Harbor Freight and purchase that tool? Uh, I'd probably go to Snap-on. Probably go to, you're probably yeah. going to get it from Snap-on. Or Brownells. Or, hey, Brownells hey. makes good tools. Hey, nice plug, huh? There's a plug, there you go. Uh, but no, so same thing with an AR-15. I mean, it, if you're just going to use it for one, you know, once or twice, and I'm using that as an exaggeration. Obviously, you're going to use it a little more than that, even if you get a cheap one. Uh, if you're just going to use it, you know, sparingly. Yeah. Sure, get a cheap one. Light duty. Light yeah, duty. Light gun. duty. Yeah. But at the same time, especially if you're getting it for, you know, home defense or something like that, this now becomes a piece of life-saving equipment. Are you going to get life-saving equipment from one of those discount stores? Oh, I don't know. Then yeah. Now you got me there. Hey. You got me there. All right. So same situation applies here. So will the will the four hundred dollar AR fifteen work just as good as the you know uh, twelve hundred dollar AR fifteen? Well, those cheaper guns have a lot of plastic on them. There, and yeah. I'm not talking like Magpul or Glock type plastic. I'm talking cheap plastic yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There's some. Uh, there. There's definitely some cheaper plastics out there that you can just tell, like for example, this B5 plastic here, I'm kind of touching it. Uh, it doesn't feel like those uh, those Chinese plastics, Steve. It feels mm. like a whole nother material. And Same thing with the aluminum and the finish on the aluminum and all that other stuff. So for example, like a mil-spec buffer tube right. or receiver extension, yep. 7075. Yep. Uh, if you see one that's listed as 6160, that's not mil-spec, that's an inferior material buffer tube. And there's a lot of companies out there, especially like if you're building a discount AR-15 and you're purchasing uh, parts from one of those companies that have a three-letter abbreviation and whatnot. I'm not going to say any of them, but you guys know okay. whatever. Sometimes they will be listed, especially your Amazon specials, as a mil-spec receiver extension when all they really are is a... Yeah, they're kind of mil spec as far as dimensions, dimensions. go, but not material. Right. And I've seen some uh, pretty indifferently made four ends. I've seen Picatinny rails that were not true Picatinny. I've seen yep. all kinds of stuff. And the point we're trying to make here for you guys is that just because it works doesn't mean it's going to keep working and keep working well. The, the difference between your expensive stuff and your cheap stuff is that the expensive stuff I mean, and when I say expensive, I mean quality made stuff. Just because you charge a lot for it doesn't mean it's good. That's a whole other topic for another day. Anyways, that's going to outlast and outperform the cheaper stuff. Even though they both work initially, guess which one's going to keep working in the long run? Yep, that's just the way it is with 
a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a, a friend of ours that says, uh, nice things cost money. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that couldn't be, uh, couldn't be more true. That's right. So if you disagree, if you think your $350 AR-15 will beat my $1,000 AR-15, please leave a comment below. We'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button, and be sure to tune in next time when we bring you another episode of Smithbusters.